So we talked about this before. There were some rumblings about possibly opening up NFL ownership, partial ownership to equity firms. So entities that invest in companies will be able to invest in NFL teams. This already exists for other things. I believe pretty much all of them, MLB. I know the Bucks, uh, the well, basketball, the Bucks do. Um, more on that in a minute. But they're, they're discussing, Jimmy Haslam, I guess, is going to present at some owners meeting, and there's some other owners who have been working on this, and they're going to present their findings and all this stuff. But we don't have all the details, but there are some more details, so I wanted to mention it. First of all, I believe the last time we talked about this, we had talked about that there was a potential to open up a 10% stake in a team. I was not a fan of it. Um, apparently now the, the newest talks are 10% is the maximum ownership of a single entity could be up to 30% total. So there's that. A um, couple other things here. So I just want to go through a couple bullet points. Private equity interest. NFL is exploring allowing private equity or institutional capital into team ownership to make the ownership market more liquid and push valuations higher. Now, it's funny because one of the things that keeps coming up here is sort of this... Um, this poor me thing of like, well, we're becoming so valuable that nobody wants to buy our teams anymore. And I was like, well, I don't really understand. First of all, who's trying to sell their team that this is becoming a big problem? I don't see where that's an issue. Because here's the other thing. Um, you don't have to have single ownership to begin with. There are already teams that are owned by multiple people. In fact, the only requirement, I believe, right now is that a the the uh, principal owner, like the main owner, the guy that's that's seen as the owner, only has to own 30%. On top of that, you don't have to put cash down. We'll get into that in a minute. So I don't necessarily buy it. The fact that, well, you know, the uh, we're becoming so valuable that we just can't buy any, we can't do anything if we try to sell our teams because there aren't enough people that want to buy it. I'm not buying that. I'm just not. And so you can see here, we'll, we'll go through multiple things where I think this is a lot of BS, and it's about um, people trying to make some maneuvers here. One of them is um, more liquid cash, so getting a, a cash infusion, which I think is probably part of it, but maybe not most of it. Because even that, last time we talked, didn't make sense. Who in their right mind would sell off now 30% of their team just so you can what? Do some renovations? And then you lose 30% of your revenue to this other, like, it's a net loss proposition. That's why these other people are investing, because they're going to make more money than they lose. So that didn't make sense. Well, here's one. Push valuations higher. As soon as they push that button, the value of these teams, as these infusions of cash come in, goes through the roof. Okay. Uh, by the way, it also talks about institutional capital. So private equity is one of the things they're talking about, which is, you know, these firms that can come in and invest. They're also talking about institutional capital, which could include things like, oh, I don't know, your 401k. You know, <laughs> these, there are funds like that that will be allowed to buy into NFL teams. So you might actually be invested in NFL teams over these uh, next few years. We'll see. Specific details such as type of funds allowed and ownership percentage are still under discussion with a range of outcomes possible. Uh, institutional capital says the conversation is broader than just private equity with other uh, forms of institutional capital showing interest in the NFL. They're even possibly talking it up to um, uh, wealth fund, what is it, WFM or whatever. I doubt that's going to be a thing, but that would be interesting. That's basically like government-owned things uh, or state-owned um, the NFL may raise the acquisition debt limit, lower equity requirements for principal owners, or increase the cap on investors. So this is kind of what I mentioned before. So raise the acquisition debt limit. Again, nobody puts down, I shouldn't say nobody, but generally, and, and this is just the way, even if they have the money, people that have billions of dollars, even if their stake in a team is $100 million, they're not going to put $100 million in. They're going to use the bank's money to buy their stake and then they're going to get a higher return than the interest rate, and they're just going to let that that play out. So all that's doing is, by raising the debt limit, you can use more debt or more of the bank's money as opposed to your own money. Obviously, if you're an investor, that's something you want to do. Um, let's see, lower equity requirements. So right now, uh, you have to have a minimum stake. Well, if we want to get more people involved, you lower that um, minimum 
entry point because they're opening up the pool to more people so that they can open up the pool to more money and increase the cap on investors. That's pretty self-explanatory. Committee deliberation special owners meeting include owners like Clark Hunt and Arthur Blank will present findings at the March meetings with possible votes in May or later. Right now, there is no strong opposition. While there's little opposition to institutional involvement, the extent or acceptance of implementation remains undecided. All right, and then there was a second one here. Um, some of the points were shrinking buyer pool, raising team valuations. We already talked about that a little bit, but again, that's that's the main selling point that I'm not necessarily buying. Cash infusion, limited decision power. So private equity investments would likely be passive without decision-making power, similar to structures of other sports leagues. Now, I would be interested in looking into that um, because I don't I don't know much about that, but that's my biggest fear. Not necessarily as a Packer fan. We'll get to that. But, I mean, if these people have a stake in the team, they obviously are going to have some level of pull and they're going to have some things that are more beneficial to them than others. Why would they not push? I'm not saying they have decision making. In other words, they can't unilaterally decide anything. I understand that. That doesn't mean they can't push. That doesn't mean they don't have influence. So I would be interested in, in learning a little bit more about that. Not that I have any influence in this decision. I just like knowing what the heck is going on. Private equity seeks returns on investment, viewing NFL teams as profitable and prestigious assets. Obviously, NFL is considering how the structure of these investments, looking at models from other leagues. Again, this is pretty common around the NFL. Possible complications, decisions on cross-ownership, passive investment, and exit strategies need to be finalized in any new rules will require vetting of potential investors. The cross-ownership thing I find very interesting because here's the deal. couple things. The guy that is introducing this is Haslam, who owns the Browns. Haslam owns also, or has the, I believe, majority share in the Milwaukee Bucks. He has a, I believe it's called the Haslam Group, which is a private equity firm that invests in things including sports teams. There is a MLB team, whatever. It might even be in the notes here. We'll go there in a second. So again, I, I don't know how much of this is Haslam going, oh, but what if I want to sell this and, and I can't because there's nothing here, as opposed to him saying, bro, what if I had a plan that made us all super rich and made the value of our teams go through the roof and we can invest in each other's teams? That's where the whole cross-ownership thing comes in, because obviously there's a conflict of interest. But as soon as this happens, he would be allowed to invest in the Miami Dolphins or some other teams. Here's some other owners, by the way, that are involved in these things. Stan Kroenke of the LA Rams owns Kroenke Sports and Entertainment. He has ownership stakes in the Denver Nuggets, Colorado Avalanche, Colorado Rapids, Arsenal FC, Colorado Mammoth, and the LA Gladiators, also involved in real estate. Jerry Jones has... Um, the Jones Family Holdings, Robert Kraft has the Kraft Group, Arthur Blank has AMB Group, which includes Home Depot. Jimmy Haslam has Haslam Sports Group, which has, again, Cleveland Browns, Columbus Crew, and Milwaukee Bucks. Paul Allen, um, who's passed away, but uh, Seattle Seahawks, Vulcan Inc., uh, Portland Trail Brazers, Seattle Sound, Terry Pagula. Uh, I, I knew that one when he got in there. And that was my immediate thought was how this is not a main priority, but this is more common than I was aware of. Buffalo Sabres, Rochester Americans, and Buffalo Bandits. And then uh, Shahid Khan has Fulham FC, All Elite Wrestling, Flexing. So a lot of these guys, what they, they have a lot of businesses, and then they have these umbrella companies that invest and buy different businesses. This This opens up and allows people to come in and invest. Now, maybe if they don't allow cross-ownership, they will not be able to buy into any NFL teams. I'm assuming that is rule number one that they're going to pass. But still, I mean, it just it just feels like these are people who are in this business who are trying to open up business to their businesses. And who's to say that there isn't some intermingling, right? Maybe I'm not a... Uh, owner of this group, but I'm a part of that group? What if I'm a 10% owner in a firm that wants to invest in the Buffalo Bills? I mean, I'm. I, are you saying I can't just because I'm a little bit of an owner? I don't know. The whole thing seems a little weird. Here's the best news, though, for those of you that are Packer fans as I am. This really shouldn't have anything to do with the Green Bay Packers. In fact, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if the Packers don't even get a seat at the table for this. Actually, they probably should be able to because it still includes 
the uh, the NFL. But um, the Green Bay Packers, even if they were allowed to participate in this, which doesn't make a lot of sense, remember the Green Bay Packers are a nonprofit organization. These are profit-seeking entities looking to invest in profitable businesses. They're not going to invest in a nonprofit, even if there's not legalities preventing it, which there might be, I don't know. But any profits that you get as a nonprofit need to be invested back into the team. So that would just be a donation <laughs> if a team invested or a, a entity invested. So um, very interesting thing. It's interesting to me. Maybe nobody else cares. Um, but there's some potential big changes coming to the NFL. I mean, look, if overall this just means the value of these teams and everything else goes up, as far as I'm concerned, um, I don't care if it ruins these other teams. And every time more money gets infused into the NFL, it just means the salary caps go higher, which ends up being a benefit to uh, the NFL in general and for all of us. So whatever, you guys figure it out. But again, it's one of those things that seems massive that I don't hear anybody talking about.